welcome to my garden to the Gingy Good Earth Show, your host, Ginger Lily, and today we're going to do a reading on the Snake Doctor, and also I'm showing you a real black snake skin shedding. It was nine feet long, and then I found it on my front porch, hiding under the plantain plants where I grew an apple tree at one time. So welcome. And again, this is the Gingy Good Earth Show. And today is Veterans Day. So I'll have a special on, on honoring the veterans today. So bear with me. I'm going to scan right on the picture show. I have a great deal of information to share with you today. And again, I want to give a special dedication to the American Armed Forces and a big thank you for helping America stay blue and true. Okay, and we all need to work on being true blue. I thank the Air Force, Army, Marines, Navy, the Coast Guard, the Space Force, which is our newest branch of the Armed Forces, which was originally a branch of the Navy. Again, my father was a Navy CB for many years, toured theaters in the South Pacific, and he helped many young recruits build up their morale in order for them to withstand the trials and tribulations of war, because war is hell, and you have to survive it and peace to all mankind and goodwill and this day is to honor the American veterans. So I'm going to put the camera down and today I'm reading a section of the book from the book called The Snake Doctor. Enjoy the program today. And again, I want you to focus on the picture show so you can find the gin in the picture. Also, this, the spacecraft and the gin. They'll be located on the left-hand side. And if I'm reading and I spot it, then I will uh, point it out and we'll talk about it. But we want to get through a program today. And it is the 11th of November, 2020, and the results of the uh, United States of America election is still being counted, but it does look like favorability to the Republican Party for the House and seat and the presidential seat will be held by Donald J. Trump. And so we are experiencing and witnessing the debilir, de, debilita, de, <laughs> deliberations, you know, for all the candidates who have run for office and are pledging their hearts for the American Constitution and if they negate from the Constitution, then they shouldn't be running for an American election because America is a republic and we abide by the Constitution of the United States of America and the Declaration of Independence 
1776. So again, I welcome you. Enjoy the program. Son of my soul. So this is a forget-me-nots around the gal in the picture. So let's read. Son of my soul. Son of my soul, thou Savior dear, it is not might it is not night if thou be near. So I'm going to start over because, as I said, I do not have a script and I pick things out that I think would be fun to read. And I'm trying to make my program very warm, warm and cozy. Okay. And fun filled. It's supposed to be fun. And, uh,. We are ultra, we're ultra light down here, okay, so we want to be, we want to have good sensitivity for everybody that's watching, and this is supposed to be fun-filled, artistic, and educational, the whole program. So, we have son, son of my, son of my soul, so I'm going to start to read. And I'm reading by candlelight. It just makes reading more romantic. And it helps the program bloom into a wonderful bouquet of happiness. Son of my soul, thou Savior dear, if is not night, if thou be near. You can see the larks. There's a picture of larks with the um, florals of forget-me-nots. Oh, may, nay, earth, born cloud, arise to hide thee from thy servant's eyes when the soft dews of kindly sleep my weary eyelids gently steep. Be my last thought, how sweet to rest forever on my Savior's breast. And then we have violas. Violas, violets, Johnny jump-ups. Abide with me from morn to eve. For without thee I cannot live. Abide with me when night is na nay. For without thee I dare not die. And then we have a very spiritual picture of a guardian angel with lilies. Standing with lilies. And poppies for sleep. And lilies for for peace. If some poor wondering child of thine have spurned today the voice divine, now, Lord, the gracious work begin, let him no more lie down in sin. Come near and bless us when we wake ere through the world our way we take, till in the ocean of thy love we lose ourselves in heaven above. So there's a real pretty picture of a, somebody's domicile, their house. It's very pretty. And there we go. That was the end. So that was Son of Son of my soul. Okay, so the next poem I want to read is Peace on Earth. Peace on Earth. Be careful, honey, 
ignorance a disease that spreads like honey melting over burning toast. The bumblebee is the lovely gardener that inspires the good to blossom. Okay, this, I wrote those two poems in 2002. And I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to give it a good try. Look at my spinning love wheel. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Okay, so I just wanted to show you. Okay, here's another poem. Poem, The Truth of Poetry. Glimmering poems emerge from my soul, keeping me from my mask-like roll. All day long I think of them, hoarding each like a sparkling gem. But quickly I lose the rhythm and the words begin to dim. To me, the loss of each phrase is like the removal of a limb. Later on, I bitterly stare at what I write, knowing that it changed, that it's no longer quite the same purely shining sight. By LBJ. Okay, now if I have time to read chapter 8 in the Universal History of the United States of America, I will. But I want to read from the Snake Doctor. Snake, do snake Doctor. And let me go ahead and show you my black... I actually had two black skin snake skin sheddings. But I lost... No, maybe... I, yep. You're going to be shocked to see how long this is. Look how long this is. This is nine feet. This was, <laughs> this was in the state of Pennsylvania. So that was the snakeskin that I wanted to share with you. If you have ever seen a, the shedding of a snakeskin. Now I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Um, I look out for snakes when I hike in the woods. And I'm not afraid. Because I know the snake is more afraid of me. So, if you're hiking in the woods and you have a log that's crossing your path and you can't see beyond it, you should step on the log and tap it and then the snake will have a chance to get away or roll the log away from you. But, you know, always remember that snakes hide. They can hear you coming before you can see them. So that means you want to prepare your eye of path before you by searching and looking on the ground. Now in the south, like South Carolina, you have to worry about the snakes falling out of the trees. That's the problem with hiking in the, in the Carolina mountains is because the snakes climb the trees and uh, here's the tail. Look at the tail. Look how tiny the tail is. But, uh, so that's why um, snakes, uh, you have to know the type of snake, whether it's poisonous or non-poisonous. So red against yellow will give you a heart attack. Red against black, you're safe. There's like little sayings for snakes and you should look them up. Is it black against yellow will give you a heart attack? Yellow against red? But the uh, coral snake, which has red, black, and yellow rings around it. And I don't have my phone with me, so I can't look it up. So you'll have to do that as an assignment to know. And then I'm going to read a nice section of the book. And I'm going to, I haven't picked out anything, so. As you're watching the picture show, which gives you more time to see pictures. Now see the Walt Disney building that's made out of beeswax. And so we're going to have to move the snake skin. So you can see, we'll put it over here. So you can see the, uh, 
the bees, the beeswax. Okay, all those figurines are made out of beeswax. Okay. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just do chapter one. I'm going to start with chapter one. And chapter one starts out, In the north they call them devil's darning needles, but in the south they are snake doctors, and for a reason. These harmless and decorative dragonflies, with their slim arrow-like bodies, their quick darting flight, and their filmy wings, as though the arrows had been fletched with bits of drawn lace or clothed down there with a curious fetish. So I'm talking about a dragonfly, and I love dragonflies, and I saw ancient dragonflies, more than a hundred, at my front porch in Pittsburgh, and that was miraculous. And all the kids saw it, too. We just walked outside, and there they were on our front porch. We were in bare feet, and the flagstone was still cold from the morning of the fall. In the north, they call them devil's darning needles. But in the south, they are snake doctors, and for a reason. So... They're telling you that dragonflies are snake doctors, and for a reason. These harmless and decorative dragonflies, with their slim arrow-like bodies, their quick darting flight, and their filmy wings, as though the arrows had been fletched with bits of drawn lace, are clothed down there with a curious fetish. When a cotton mouth is sick, and if his feelings match his disposition, he must be sick most of the time. The snake doctor comes hurrying to him with the medication for what ails him. And a cotton mouth is a type of snake, so you need to look that up on the Wikipedia. Perhaps 75 or 100 years ago, some slave newly in from Africa saw a cotton mouth moccasin sunning its flat heart-shaped head on top of the, the yellow creek water and along the creek came flashing one of these swift creatures seeking a perch upon which to leave its eggs and the black man saw it suddenly chuck and hover and stand at poise in the air an inch above the snake. And the snake's head was very still. And from that figure, this strange bug was a voodoo bug ministering to the ailing reptile. In such a matter, any man's theory is as good as the next one's. The provable thing is that a good many of the men and more than a good many of the men believe in the fable for a fact, and nearly all of them, regardless of color, know the libeled insect as a snake doctor. Now one of the men I have intent to write about here was known as snake doctor too. And for this also there were reasons. To begin with he was very long and thin, a mere rack of bones, held together under the casting under the casing of a taut yellow a taunt yellow skin, and he had popped staring eyes, and was amazingly fast in his bodily movements. See him slipping through the willows, so fruitive and quick and defiant, 
with his inadequately small head, his sloped shoulders, his erratic side-steppings, this way or that, and thereby inevitably you were reminded of his namesake, Snake Doctor. Okay. And again, um, this book was written... It's a very old book. In 1823. Okay. So they're talking about men of color, and, you know, we are getting away from that uh, through uh, new thinking um, because it's not good to describe somebody by an adjective of their domicile, of where they're from, but more often it's so much better to describe somebody from their heritage of where they're from. So depending on what nation or continent or community, township, that way. So it's kind of more modern thinking for today and we have different groups you know we have ukrainians we have the mohawks we have the brazilians we have the argentinians we have the cape may africans we have the egyptians we have the french we have the asians and there's so many different groups of asiatic people so then you have your Chinese, your Philippine, your Thailand, and many, many Indonesians, India. So we got to learn our global history. And my program is kind of special because I have an international doll collection. And just like the Amish people here in my setup, um, they're actually from uh, Germanic peoples and have a heritage of German culture. So again, they came in from Germany in the 1700s. So people's lives are variable, and that's what makes all of us so unique, and we have great history. And, uh, and that's the thing to feel very blessed that you have culture, and there's so many good things about all these diverse cultures that we all can learn from each other. And again, respect each other's cultures too, because everybody has a different way of thinking and living, and people are culturally diverse. And I don't blame you, it's really hard to keep up with. So, but we're becoming very modern in times and it's the 21st century and we have to uh, move forward and recognize all these wondrous uh, peoples of the earth so he we just we just described the snake doctor along the cashier's creek where they throve in a wicked abundance was his regular ranging ground. His cabin stood in the bottoms near a place notorious for its snakes. They were his friends, and so to speak, he caught them, and with his bare hands he handled them as a butcher might handle links of sausage. He sold them once in a while to the naturalists, or showmen, or zoological collectors. There was a taxidermist in Memphis who was an occasional customer of his. In the season, he rendered down their soft fat and drew it off in bottles and retailed it. Snake oil being held a souvenir remedy for rheumatism. And <clears throat> if you have a urban life in the forest, country living, and you have a uh, kind of like a 
a nest of snakes and you have young kids and you can't have the snakes around because if you get bit by a black snake or a poisonous snake it can cause bodily harm to you to you and so um, I know that my father would catch the black snakes with a tea stick and take a stick that was shaped like a Y and just slam it down on its neck and then he would skin it, cook the meat, and then have all the kids sit down at the picnic table and he put the uh, little metal tacks all around the edge of the snake skin and then gave us a jar of Morton salt and we would sit there and make circles with the salt until we got the oils off the skin on the inside and cleaned out and then make a belt out of the snake skin. So that was something that, uh, you know, most farmers or countrymen in, that live in the forest could utilize the snake skins and use them and wear them as belts. And again, you know, people make boots and so forth and purses. So it was just another story. So... Again, people collected black snake skins. In the season, he rendered down their soft fat and drew it off in bottles and retailed it, snake oil being held a souvenir remedy for rheumatism. By such traffickings, he was locally reputed to have made large sums of money, but he rarely spent any of this money and so he went by the name of miser also. Well, in a way of speaking, he was a miser. He zealously converted what he got and kept coveted. He zealously coveted what he got and kept it hidden away in the chinking of his log shack. But he was nowhere near so well off as the community gave him credit for being. The snake business is a confined and uncertain business and restricted, moreover, to its special markets. A dealer's stock and trade may be plentiful, as in this case, but his patrons must be sought to be exact Snake Doctor had $97 in his cachet. But swearing to the truth of this on a stack of Bibles a mile high wouldn't have made the people